we resume our conversation with Victoria Schofield, who has written a beautiful book called The Fragrance of Tears, talking about her 30 years of friendship with Benazir Bhutto. But when we talk about issues like this, we inadvertently turn to India and Pakistan relationship as well. So let's resume our conversation with Victoria Schofield. The control of the army is to a great extent, the undoing of the country. Why is that? Why is that control so strong that even a charismatic person like Ben Azir could not change the scenario or anyone else? Well, I think one of the difficulties of Pakistan is you've got to look, you've got to go back to partition. And again, I feel very privileged in this respect because I've studied partition. I've written a biography of Lord Wavell, who was the viceroy from 1943 to 47, before yeah. Mountbatten took over. Many students just study what Mountbatten did but it's really important to know what was going on before what the convulsions were between the the and the opposing parties and I think that if you if you do understand that you go back with with that knowledge you see the, the, that it was extremely difficult um, at that time to bring about a reconciliation and consequently we are where we are but um, I'm sorry I've just lost my thread we were why Pakistan as a country um, was was only four provinces, four disunited provinces. Hmm. You didn't have the same bureaucracy, the same civil service that British India as we know it. British India in Pakistan was Western Punjab. And again, you've got to go back to, to understanding that. Whereas India, it's started off with bureaucracy, a much more uh, structured system. Pakistan was made up of, you know, Sindh, of Baluchistan, of uh, Northwest Frontier Provinces was, and then this half of Western Punjab, which nonetheless made up two thirds of the Pakistani um, uh, population at that time, still does. And um, so it, it didn't have the same structure. Uh, Jinnah, as we know, the founder of Pakistan, who had a great deal of respect from everybody, he died so soon. The Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan was assassinated. They lurched from one premier to another throughout the 1950s. Then, of course, you've got the whole relationship with East Pakistan, as was, you know, with the secession of Bangladesh. So it's never had quite the same focus which which India has had. It's never had quite the same structure. Then you throw into mix the mix the dispute over Jammu and Kashmir, hmm. um, which uh, it, it maintains the army. And, you know, people often say yeah. that the army is the institution in Pakistan people love to hate because they hate the fact that it's it's dominant. They hate the fact that, you know, they've had military dictatorships. I mean, I, I lost the tally now, but normally one would say that, you know, it spent more time under military dictatorship than, than under civilian government. I mean, I think it's the balance is now shifting. but. Um, it, it's there because it's the guardian of the nation. And when you have this very strong rhetoric between the two countries, um, it justifies the Pakistan army saying, there you are, you know, we need to be there. We are the guardian of the nation. If we weren't there, the Indians would invade. Um, and so it's managed to get this, this huge position of authority, more so than, for example, the Indian army. You know, you, you feel the Indian army does what the politicians say, whereas you don't always feel that within Pakistan. But it's just what I would put it down to is one of the tragedies of having unresolved disputes because it gives license to institutions to be stronger and more dictatorial than they otherwise would be. They don't go back into their barracks. When you have travelled the scope of Pakistan, do you feel, uh, what kind of sentiment do you pe feel in, here in people for India? Well, actually, um, when, when I've been in Pakistan, I mean, this is, again, one of the great tragedies is that, and people know that I've been to India, they normally say, oh, what's it like? Oh, we long to go. Oh, we want to see that. Have you seen the Taj Mahal? You know, have you been here? Um, at a human, at a sort of ordinary people's level, there is huge interest in India. And I think, actually, I found the same when I've traveled in India for Pakistan. 
um, that, that people long to go, you know, and it, the Pakistanis, they like to, you know, they love Bollywood films and, you know, one of the most ridiculous things is that every time there's a spat between India and Pakistan, the Bollywood films are suddenly banned, you know, I mean, really. Um, and and I, I think, again, you know, left to civil society, I actually think there would be peace between the two countries because they've got far more in common as neighbours than they have differences. But I am afraid to say I think the political differences are, are fostered because it's a vested interest. It's it's um it's just one way to go forward. But they're not the people suffering; those people who take the decisions. Um, and you know, I I speak from uh, you know the heart about this, and I also speak from my own ground knowledge. Being a Britisher, when you read in in histories or the view that it was Britain who who divided India into Pakistan and also that Churchill, there was a whole film made on it, that he actually uh, favoured Pakistan and hoped that that will keep India un um, not very stable. How do you react uh, to these views? The in Britishers, Britishers they, divided and rule and they divided the two countries and that kept and that keeps, of course, extended to the argument that it just keeps the whole arms dealing alive and keeping that uh, that area unstable uh, is good for the West. They may have divided, not divided and lead. We know why they divided and ruled for the religious sentiment, but they did not divide and lead. I'm afraid the filmmakers you're referring to the Viceroy's house have not read the history books. You've got to go through the transfer of power. You've got to read the history. And I'm afraid this is one of the worst canards, I would say, that's being perpetrated at the moment. Um, to, to say that the British wanted to divide um, India. You've got to go back to the history books, Lavina. I'm sorry, it's such a big topic to see how hard they kept, they wanted the um, India to remain united and how hard they worked. And I know this having written my biography of Wavell. They worked incredibly hard, mainly, and if you can put it in this context, because they felt Britain's interests were better served by having a united India. And if you're trying to, um, say what people did in their own interests. They felt Britain's interests would be far better um, served by having united India because they were conscious about China. And there's a particular right. document I remember, I mean, there are certainly hundreds of documents, but one where they're talking about dividing the Indian army and they were saying, well, India and Pakistan will never fight. Therefore, there's actually no need to divide this army because their only enemy is going to be China. So I'm afraid this is what I would call half-baked history decades later which, you know, picks a couple of facts, picks a couple of things. Churchill was out of power. You know, he had no authority at all at the time of the partition of India. Um, but you've, you've really got to go back to the history books um, to, uh, and to the documents to understand that. It doesn't benefit anybody to go back and, and try and, um, you know, put blame. Uh, again, if you look at it, I mean, with counterfactual history, I would say, one of the biggest problems has been this dispute over Jammu and Kashmir, because initially when uh, India was partitioned, eventually they felt they had to agree to it. The idea was not the partition we see today with these closed national boundaries. It was to have soft borders because you've got East and West Pakistan. They felt that these countries, they're just sovereign states. It's what Muhammad Ali Jinnah had asked for, sovereign states where Muslims in the majority, but they'll come and go, you know, the borders will be soft. But the real problem, and you can throw some blame here, was leaving this unresolved state of Jammu and Kashmir, which put both countries on a war footing at once. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much. And of course, I had to uh, ask because this, this is another, another part of history that is discussed. But as you said, it's a very big, to long topic. Uh, but thank you very much. As we end, since we didn't have chai together and I couldn't offer you food like you always do. Oh, exactly. we, can, <laughs> we can talk, I can just end by asking you, which is your favorite food from the subcontinent? Oh, my favorite uh, food is um, dal, particularly done in the north, in Kaiba Pakhtunkhwa. They do delicious dal and pushari naan. Oh, fantastic. Um, I, I haven't had either, so I'll have to look out for that. You can please look up and tell uh, and show everybody the, of course, the fragrance. Well, I'll show you the back. Yes. Because here am I and Benazir. Oh, um, oh, my God, you look awesomely beautiful. 
Not that you're well, not now, well, but amazing. You're <laughs> looking very good now. <laughs> she looks there is. different. Brilliant, the fragrance of tears available online uh, and even in the bookstores. Please uh, go to Dubai because Victoria does not only write about the person, but she takes along the whole history. And it's, it is an always a very interesting read to uh, see her books and read her books. Thank you very much for, for the interview and opening up to us. Uh, how did you like this episode? Do write into me on chaichat at ashwick.com or you can Twitter me at Lavina Tandon. Thank you, take care and God bless. Thank you.